you got a tool that hackers commonly use and you're going to show us how you capture a one-time passcode very very easily correct yeah exactly so the uh, the tool that we're going to use today is called evil genix and this is a tool that is freely available for pretty much anyone who wants to to grab and install a copy of it uh, and it's used in a lot of cases to create look-alike phishing websites very realistic and very interactive style phishing websites not the the same ones that you're used to seeing where the logos are all off and the copyright dates are wrong uh, they they use a technique called a man in the middle attack to basically intercept traffic that's being sent back and forth between you and the website that you're trying to interact with so our goals for this demo are going to be as such. We want to be able to intercept things like usernames and passwords, and we're going to use Microsoft as the example. We're going to make a lookalike Microsoft site and, uh, and grab data from it. We also want to be able to capture things like cookies and tokens and bypass multi-factor authentication. That's the big one. A regular phishing website can grab your username and password, but if you have multi-factor on the account, Ideally, what should happen is that multi-factor uh, should stop the attacker from being able to uh, to log in. We're going to showcase how that's not always the case, and we're going to do that by showing the difference between something like SMS-based multi-factor authentication and then Microsoft's number matching multi-factor system, which is what they're enforcing on a lot of their accounts uh, uh, moving forward. So with SMS enabled, we, uh, we we went ahead and logged into a demo website. And we're, of course, going to be going after Hack Me Inc. If you've seen our webinars before, you know we love to beat up on Hack Me Inc. They're our favorite target. In this case, we're going to be going after Will Hack, who is one of the members of the IT staff for Hack Me. And in this case, we're going to take him to a phishing website. And you can see the website there in the background. It looks pretty much just like a Microsoft website would look. Realistically, that's because this is Microsoft's website. We're passing traffic through our evil server and over to our victim at this point. So aside from the URL at the top of the page being different, they're really not going to see anything else. When they log in with their username and password, they're going to get that multi-factor identity prompt, and it's going to ask them to verify using a text message on their phone. So once they verify, once they've entered their password and that code, they can log into the account and they can use it like they normally would. But on the back end, let me show you what we got from the hacker's perspective. Uh, we picked up not just their username and their password, both are bad. We also know the exact method of MFA that they were using. And we, uh, you can see down at the very bottom, we intercepted their authorization tokens. That's the big part. Using that, I can now go in, if you watched our webinar on scams and fraud, I can now go into my web browser, I can load that token into my browser, and then I can just log directly into that, uh, that victim's account. No username, no password, no multi-factor authentication code. I have the entire thing captured at this point. And you can see my uh, my success message uh, down from uh, Evil Genix when we move into the next slide. It shows me uh, exactly where I'm going. So I can see the website I pulled it from. I can see the uh, the creation time. I can see the password. I can see all of that stuff. This is just a very simple demonstration about how ineffective something like a one-time password can be. We consider these to be phishing prone, and we're not the only ones. There are several ways that attackers go around these exact types of multi-factor authentication. And while they are easy, uh, they don't require any extra software, they can be used with old style flip phones, and in, they're oftentimes more comfortable because it's something people have been used to for a while. They're really not a great way of verifying any, uh, any identity over a secure system. Remember that protocols that are in place for text messaging were enacted back in like the 1980s. This is like 40 year old technology. And because of the fact that that data has to travel in between multiple cellular networks means that it's decrypted multiple times along the way or just not encrypted in the first place to make it easier for that data to move through. So we want to get away from using something like uh, text message as, the, uh, as that second factor. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Sherry Davidoff, CEO of LMG Security. And I'm Matt Duran, Director of Training and Research for LMG Security. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time. We would love to hear from you. You can reach us at info at lmgsecurity.com, find us on LinkedIn, or follow us on Twitter. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.